Hey, Jesse. Oh, look. What, uh, What's uh, going on here? Uh, checking to see if I have a uh, six pack or an eight pack. Sure. <laughs> What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. You don't need a magnifying glass to figure out whether you have a four pack, a six pack, a 10 pack, a two pack. What you do need is an understanding of ab science and more importantly, a game plan. I'm gonna give you today a strategy to not only determine what your true ab potential is, but most importantly, the information you need to realize it. But let's start with a little bit of six pack science, shall we? If you look at the anatomy of the abs, you'll see this line that runs right down the middle. It's called the linea alba and it's tendinous. This though is also tendinous, this is called a tendinous intersection. And what it does is you can see is it divides that rectus abdominis up into those compartments, whether they be a six pack, an eight pack, or a 10 pack. And yes, those do exist. But what's important here is that this configuration of three lines is what's most common. In fact, 97% of the people investigated in a study showed that they have this configuration with one and a half percent having an additional line, usually down here, that divides it into an eight pack, and then even one percent more having an extra line either down here or at the top that divides us into a 10 pack. What you don't see here though is a zero pack, and that's for good reason. In the six pack, the one that's most common for all of us, we have that first line that's two or three finger widths underneath the chest line. And then we have one that's usually right here at the umbilical level or the navel. And then you just have one that sort of divides that in between. In the eight pack, as I mentioned, you'll usually have one extra line down here, which adds one additional compartment of seven and eight. And on that 10 pack, you've got usually that line either right up under the chest or all the way down here, an additional line underneath the navel there. And that's gonna give you that incredibly rare 10 pack. But what about the other guys? Because we get these questions all the time. Jeff, I only have a four pack. You actually don't. Because as you saw in the anatomy, there's no such thing as a four pack. What you have here is an underdeveloped chest. Because if you had the chest there, you can see the three lines are in place. One, two, and three. You got your six pack there, but you're missing it and you're visually missing it because you don't have the development of the chest. And for those of you out there that say, I have a zero pack, remember, fundamentally, that's not true because we all have at least three, if not more. But what you're missing there is how you develop it. Because if you want to develop these muscles, you have to understand that this is the only part that you can hypertrophy. These bellies can be grown just like you can a bicep. The tendinous area stays sutured down. If you can develop the muscle above and the tendinous area stays where it is, you're going to get that three-dimensional growth that's going to cause a deepening and a more apparent unveiling of your abdominal development. So how do you do it? We've got to have the right training approach. And whether you have a zero, six, eight, or 10 pack, we're not breaking out magnifying glasses to try to figure out what we have, like Jesse, or what he says he was trying to do. No, we just have to rely on the science of training for a six pack, and the first clue that I need to uncover when we're looking for reasons why we're not getting it is right here, and that's you don't understand this concept, or at least all three of these. And the fact that you don't understand them leads to clues number two, three, and four of why you don't have one, and that's because you don't apply the first tension overload. You see, if you want those abs to grow and hypertrophy, you have to train them for that reason. And it's no different than any other muscle in your body, like I said. And we could do it in the form of dumbbell or weighted ab exercises. There's so many options here to just add additional weight to your body to perform the exercises you're performing and get better results from them. In other words, get growth. And no, it's not gonna make your abs bloat or grow to where they look blocky. Training with the right exercise is going to help you here. And I have so many options for you to do where we can incorporate not just additional weight in the form of dumbbells, but just utilizing the weight of our legs in different environments, namely hanging from a bar. It's a hell of a lot different to lift your legs when you're hanging from a bar than it is to lift them when you're lying on the ground. At the top of any floor-based ab exercise, you're actually taking tension off of the lower abs. At the top of any hanging ab exercise, you're actually applying more to them. It's a different form of overload and it's one more capable of creating the development that you're looking for. Which brings you to that third clue of why you may not be where you're at right now because you also don't understand this, eccentric overload. It's another way, again, to stress the midsection to your benefit. And I'm talking about having weighted ab exercises that apply stress as your abs are lengthening. We can do this with dumbbells. We can do this over the top of a physio ball. When was the last time that you actually used one of these? Or do you think that they maybe went out of style in the 2000s? It's not true. They actually apply a very safe way for you to get into extension, to overload eccentrically the rectus abdominis to allow it to grow. 
But if you did throw your fizzy ball out, you're not out of luck because you can utilize a band like this. Anything that's going to pull you back into extension that you have to resist is going to give you the opportunity to add stress to start to get those abs of yours to pop, regardless of what anatomical configuration you have underneath. Which brings you to the next clue in the great mystery of finding those abs of yours. And that is, you also don't understand this in the benefit of metabolic stress. Taking your ab sets for longer durations to that point of burn and through that point of burn is going to benefit you in terms of their development. A lot of us will want to stop as soon as we start to feel that discomfort, and that is exactly the point in time where you want to continue. But you can also drive metabolic stress through volume overload, and that comes in the form of doing abs a lot, frequently. I recommend all the time on this channel doing your abs every single day. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to include tension and weighted exercises every single day. I'm just saying you have to do some form of ab training, and it doesn't have to take a whole hell of a lot of time maybe even just five, six, or seven minutes, which God knows I have more than enough options on this channel for you to accomplish that. The fact is that all three of these are known drivers of hypertrophy, again, that can work on any muscle in your body. And certainly when the one that you're suffering to develop is actually not utilizing any of the three, you're gonna wanna look into that further and of course start doing something about it. And so as with any investigation, there's always that one smoking gun, that one piece of glaring evidence that points to the reason why we are where we are and unravels the entire mystery. Well, if your lack of a pack comes because you look like this right now, there's really no mystery here, guys. You're kind of eating like you have two assholes and you need to stop. I hate to say it any other way, but it's true. Your nutrition needs to be on point if you're going to have any kind of a six, eight, or 10 pack. And there's no way around that. And that's once again because of our anatomy. Right here, this is adipose tissue fat that's overlying all that beauty that we just looked at before. So what's the problem? If you're eating more calories than you burn in a day, you're gonna be layering on more and more of this ugly yellow stuff that's gonna hide what you're trying to reveal. If you don't look under the surface here, you're gonna see exactly why this is a big problem. This is the front, this is the back, and this is if I cut myself in half and look straight down at my abs. You can see here's one of the packs and here's the other. Here's that linea alba in the middle. Well, what's laying in front of this underneath the skin? Fat. The more fat you have, the more you're gonna fill in any gaps that you have. Any crevice that you might have that's dividing those packs apart is just gonna get filled in the same way it might be with a tile mason putting some nice fresh grout over the top of the tiles he just laid. It's not gonna reveal anything other than your lack of dedication or knowledge about the importance of nutrition when it comes to having a six pack. Guys, I will lay it all step by step out for you exactly what I eat every single day to maintain my six pack year round. I actually did it in a video you're gonna to wanna to check out here. If you're looking for a complete step by step plan with a meal plan included, you can get them over at athletics.com. All right guys, see you soon. Hey Jesse, good luck finding that.